Good morning. How's everybody doing? I felt it from back there somewhere. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the staff pastors here at Destiny Church. Uh, like Pastor Jonathan mentioned, um, he's given me the opportunity to preach and bring the word this morning. And so uh, super excited about that. Um, him and Vivi have been gone these last several days on vacation, enjoying some time off. And then uh, it's good to be able to also have a weekend off. How many of you guys know our pastors need some time off here and there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tis good, tis good. Uh, we are in the middle of a series. If you guys have been here, <clears throat> excuse me, for the last few weeks, um, we've been in a series uh, lately called Surrendered Living. Uh, and that is talking about what it looks to live a life that is fully surrendered to God. And so our theme verse for these last few weeks, I want to read it to you real quick, uh, is out of Luke chapter 22, it's verse 42. I'm going to read a couple of verses leading up to it, <clears throat> just to kind of set us up. Uh, so starting in verse 39, it says, and, and he came out, this is talking about Jesus, he came out and he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, this is our verse, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now, if you guys remember where this verse is at in the context of the life of Jesus, he is getting ready to go to the cross. He is getting ready to give his life, to willingly lay down his life, to pay for the sins of of humanity by dying on the cross. And so here at this very culminating moment, before his heavenly father, what he's asking is, like I see in front of me the path that we have to take. And I'm saying, if there's any opportunity at all, that there might be another way. This is the time to say so, God. <laughs> but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. This verse is a, a culminating moment in his life of surrendering or re-surrendering his life to the will of the Father. And so over the last few weeks, we've talked about this verse and a little bit about how it plays out in our own lives. Pastor Jonathan set us up a few weeks ago just by introducing the concept. What is surrendered living? What does it look like? How do we go about it? And then over the last couple of weeks, we kind of broke it out into some different ideas. And so the second week, we looked at about uh, our lifestyle of serving others, whether that's here at church or outside the church where we spend most of our lives at, what it like, looks like to serve others as a way of surrendering our life to God. And last week, <clears throat> we talked about what it looked like in the way that we um, surrender our lives with generosity, uh, not just money. Money is a part of the way that we get to be generous. But in our attention, in our energy, in our time, in our talent, in all the things that make up the different resources available to us, how we can be generous as a way of surrendering our lives to God. And so today, as we continue on in that topic, the, the title of my message today that I want to talk to you about is simply this, A Return to Surrender. Because I, I, I'm not sure what your life has looked like in the way that you live a lifestyle that is surrendered to God, but I have found myself <clears throat> at different moments giving all of myself to him and then somewhere down the line realizing that I have attempted to regain control of something in my life that I once gave him, like something I once fully gave that was like it belongs all to you. All of a sudden down the line, I can be like, how did I get control of that again? <laughs> Or, or even the illusion of control that I've somehow got it back. I, maybe that's just me. Maybe you could also relate to that as well. And I feel like for many of us who follow Jesus, we find ourselves returning to a place of surrender. And so I, I want to initially kind of jump off with this. I want to define what it is we're talking about. For some of you guys, maybe you think that way. Maybe you don't. I always just have to have some kind of clear expectations up front. What are we talking about? What do we mean when we say the word surrender? Because we can have different pictures in our minds of what that looks like. But I just went back to look and see, like, what is a good definition or two of surrender and how that plays out? So here's one. <clears throat> one definition of surrender would be this. To yield something to the possession or the power 
of another. So something that we have, something tangible, or maybe something that we have control over, authority over, when we give it up, when we yield it to someone else, that they now have the power that we gave them or they're in possession of that thing that we gave over to them. Another definition of surrender I know is definitely going to be our favorite, just simply means to give up. I know that's definitely a favorite because it's a whole like, wait a minute, to give up? Like, that sounds like quitting. <laughs> uh, and I know, like, it's ingrained in our mind, like, winners never quit and quitters never win. Like, we can't just give up here, right? <laughs> um, but one of the definitions of surrender, one of the ways you could think about it, is to simply give up. And I believe that in our lives, we do try to surrender ourselves and our lives to God many times. I believe that we, we understand, we realize that we ought to give ourselves to him and we attempt to surrender. But I think there are some, a couple of primary problems that we have with surrendered living as we really get into the nitty gritty of it. And I wanna share a couple of those things with you because again, maybe you can relate to these in some way. Um, if not, then you can just sit back and, and laugh at my life for a minute. So um, there are a couple of primary problems I think we have to surrendered living. Problem number one, there is no such thing as partial surrender. Like, there, there's no halvesies. It's, it's, surrender is either full surrender or it's not surrender, right? Does that make sense? Like you can't halfway give up. You can't halfway give, it's all or nothing. Surrender is full or it's not. And let me give you a good illustration that might make sense to you at all. Um, so if someone was being arrested, and maybe you can relate to that one, I for sure can't hear, I've surrendered in this form before. Um, if you've ever been arrested or just seen someone on the side of the road being arrested, or maybe just got a chance to watch TV or at some point in time a movie and saw someone being arrested, Oftentimes, when someone is being arrested, especially if it might be a felony stop or something like that, you might have guns drawn and they might tell you to put your hands in the air. That's right, that's right. When they say put your hands in the air, the thing that they mean is, these hands, put them in the air. If you've ever, if, 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 if you're being arrested and they tell you to put your hands in the air, what they mean is both hands. You, you can't attempt to surrender your life like this. I promise you, you put one hand in the air and the other one back here, that is not surrender and they do not see it that way. Right, like that is not, like you might think like, but I'm surrendered, I, get, I gave you one hand. I, I'm gonna need both. Like I'm gonna need to see you have no possession, no control, anything, like hands in the air. It's, it's all or nothing, right? Does that make sense? Here's another problem that we oftentimes have when we try to surrender. Second problem is this, is that once surrendered, I lose the right to take my power back. That, that is surrender. Like surrender is not like optional on some kind of weird timetable here. Like when you surrender, the power or the thing is given away and you don't get a chance to give it back. So let's, let's go back a second for the original illustration we were talking about if you can understand the idea of being arrested. When you're in the back of that car with the handcuffs on, there's never a moment that you get to sit back there and say, you know what? I changed my mind. I, I just need you to know, like, can, if, you can just, if you can pull the key out, just pop the cuffs. I did surrender. I would like to start over. I have thought about this. No, like, that's not the, the way it works. When you surrender and you give up your power, you give a thing up, like you, you give that possession over, um, it is up to the person that you have surrendered to if and when you get that power back, right? Like that is surrender. And so I think that sometimes we start to get in a place where we're willing to surrender something to God or surrender our lives to God. But when we come to the grips with, or when we come to grips with, the fact that this, this is a full thing, like this is not half surrender, this isn't partial surrender, I, I don't get to pick and choose when I get to my power back here, this is surrender. Sometimes we run into some, some problems with that. 
because it can be difficult to do. When we feel like that there's some kind of bit of it we get to control, like, like God, I will surrender it as long as you understand I have some terms I would like to put out first. Like, that's not surrender. Like, in, in fact, you actually have asked him to surrender to your own will in that moment. Like, w- surrender is full, and we lose the choice of when we get that back, if we get it back at all. <clears throat> and so today, as we talk about making what I feel like for many of us is going to be a return to surrender, there's three specific things I want to cover with us today. The first one is this. What exactly does God want me to surrender? Like, what is it? Like a surrendered living, living a life surrendered to God. What does he want me to surrender? The second one is this, and this is going to be a really important one. Why does he want me to surrender it at all in the first place? What's the purpose? Like the, the reason why is oftentimes more important than the what. We need to know why. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how do we go about doing that. If God wants something from me and there's a reason why he wants it, then if I'm going to do that, how do I do it? Okay, so if you're taking notes, that's the three directions that we're going to go today as we lay it out. So number one, what does God want us to surrender to him? So I could could kind of... um, I could kind of play this one out a little bit and we could kind of itemize some lists. But let me just kind of cut to the chase for you. If we could itemize the list, what we would end up coming up with is this, everything. That's what God wants from you. Everything. All of you. What he wants from you is to give yourself to him. The good, the bad, the ugly, the things you, that are great, the things that are not great, like all of you, he wants it all. And, and sometimes we can enter into a relationship with God. Sometimes, in, depending on kind of how you grow up and what religious or church circles, there's kind of this idea of like, yeah, just give that to God. And like, let's just start here. And, and maybe no one ever told you up front, he's coming for all of it. And he wants all of you. Uh, and, and, and Jesus, in, in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 29 and 30, Jesus is making an, an Old Testament reference here. He's going to pull back. And this is only one part of it. We're going to focus here. Uh, it says, Jesus answered. He says, the um, most important is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. Jesus is in some ways itemizing some things out here of how God wants us to love him, how God wants us to give ourselves to him. And he itemizes it out, but really what it come back to is this, everything, all of who you are, spirit, soul, body, an entire full person experience that what he wants from you is everything. And, and so you may have had moments where you have, in essence, partially surrendered your life. But I'm telling you, God wants all of it. And he's coming for all of it. And that's not like, I'm not saying that in a way of like, that's something that we should be afraid of. Like, he's coming for all of it because God has something that he wants to give you on the other side of you giving him yourself that is way better than anything you might be tight-fisted holding on to. And so, uh, and, and I'll even say this before we really kind of move on in, in, into this. Um, this is normal for most of us that actually, we think that we're fully surrendering to him, but we just find out that actually we were giving him a piece of it. And, and we come back to these moments where I've got more that I've got to bring to the table because I just didn't realize I was holding on to something. And you know what? God already knows that about you. You don't have to feel guilty or or condemned that like you've given yourself over to God and then realize there was something else. It's like, I think I lied. Maybe you did. Maybe you just didn't know. But at the end of the day, he he knows and understands and is okay with the fact that we're going to return to a place of surrender all throughout our lives. And when we try to surrender to him, I think that sometimes we encounter some problems with the way that we go about it. And I wanna talk to you about those a little bit today because again, maybe you can relate to some of these here. 
Um, when we surrender to God, we, we try to surrender everything to him. We encounter some problems. Um, one, I think that the way we surrender that usually we only surrender when the sacrifice is easy. But what about when it's hard? Sometimes God will ask you for something, a piece of your life. He'll, I mean, he wants it all, but he'll take these little pieces, and he might ask you for something, and you're like, yes, thank you. I, honestly, I didn't even know I had that. Um, it's very easy to give it to you because I, I didn't even know that was a thing I had. But sure, yeah, absolutely, you can take it. But then sometimes he's going to ask you for things that are really hard. He's going to ask you for things you really love. He's going to ask you to give them to him. And so I know it's, it, we usually do it when it's easy, but what about when it's hard? Here's, here's another one. We usually only surrender when it makes us look good. But what about when it won't? We all, we all get it, right? There are things, like, our, there are parts of our lives that are hidden from outside of the view of people, but there's a lot of our life we live that people see and know about. And when you surrender certain parts of your lives, people will see it, and it will make you look good. Like, oh, man, he loves Jesus. You see him give that part? Did you see how that he gave that part of his life? But there's going to be some things he's going to ask for that when you surrender it over to him and people realize that that's a struggle, a thing that you have, that you surrendered to God and it was visible to other people, it won't make you look good. So what about those things that don't make you look good when you surrender them, but in fact, don't make you look good? Another one is this, we usually only surrender when it's religious churchy stuff. But what about the rest of our lives? Like, here's an example. We easily surrender our Sunday morning. We know, I mean, that's a Sunday morning. Like, that's church day. Like, I think that's the day Jesus wants me to give to him. Like, it's my Sunday morning habit. Or we easily surrender some of those moments of our day that you're like, you know what? I should read my Bible and pray. I think the Bible said, read me and pray. And so, like, I should give some time of my day that I do that, right? And so it's very religious, churchy stuff. But here's the deal. That encompasses a couple hours out of seven days a week. What about when God asks you for the rest of that time? It's, it's easy. We usually find it easy to surrender when it's the churchy stuff. But what about when it's not? Here's another one for you. Um, we usually only surrender when it's easy to trust and it doesn't take much faith. But what about when it takes all of your faith? Like, like, like sometimes God asks you for something that you're like, he asks you for it, give this to me, surrender this part of your life to me, and you're like, you know what, no problem. Maybe you've had one of those. Like God asks you for something, you're like, I got so much of that, here, take a little bit. You just want a little bit of time? Take a little bit of time. Oh, you want a little bit of my money? Take a little bit of my money. You want a little bit of this? Take a little bit of that. But, but what about when he asks you to surrender a part that all of a sudden you're like, I don't think I feel comfortable with that. Like, you're asking me for that, and I don't feel comfortable. Like, I don't know if I'll have enough if, if I surrender that to you, that much of what you're asking. So what about when he asks enough of us that it takes all of our faith? It's a different story. Well, what about this? Uh, we usually only surrender when he wants to fix the bad stuff in our lives. But what about when he wants the good stuff? Like, of course there's parts of your life that you're like, you want my addictions? Take those right there. Absolutely. Like, you can have those. You can have all the bad stuff you want. I ain't doing nothing with it but messing my own life up. Maybe you can fix it up. But, like, what about the stuff that you're like, no, this is good stuff. You don't need it. What about those things? We find it easy to surrender the bad stuff, but sometimes we have a problem when he wants the good things. And, and to kind of flip, switch gears a little bit about the way we think of it and the fact that he's coming for everything um, oftentimes we can fail to surrender because we're convinced, I'm sorry, we're not convinced that we need to, but we believe things are better left within our control. Like, there are certain things you, that God will ask you for, and you're like, no, I got this. Don't you see I'm killing it? This area of life is good. This one's the one you need. <laughs> Right? Like there are parts that you feel like, no, 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 no. Like this is better left in my own control. You don't, you don't need this. 
Sometimes we fail to surrender because we don't consider him trustworthy, but we're waiting to see if he'll truly love us. That, that's why, like, can I make a caveat here? When God shows himself trustworthy in your life, write that down somewhere. So, like, find a way to document it. Keep these things in a place you can go back to because you'll find over time he will repeatedly prove himself faithful and trustworthy. And so there are going to be moments where you see that you've controlled something in your life. He wants you to surrender it to him. And it'll be important to go back and see he has always loved me. He has always been faithful to me. He has always been trustworthy. And so again, when I find myself in a place where he's asking me to surrender something, I can know he's trustworthy and loving. Does that make sense? And another one is this. Sometimes we fail to surrender because we simply just don't understand the magnitude of God's power, his holiness, and his love. Oh, man. If we could see God for who he really is. Like, not even thinking of, like, the biggest and most amazing part of who you've seen in your life. That's still just a piece. Can you imagine we get to heaven and all of a sudden, like, the, the scope of who he really is is in front of us. The magnitude of how holy and loving and powerful and awesome he is, is just right there. If we could really see it, we'd have no problem surrendering. Because, but sometimes we, like my own kids, like there are times I might ask them to give me something or like, like I need that, like you, you need to bring that here. And you know, like if, if they understand, like I'm, an, I'm a grown up, like I'm an adult, like you can give that to me and I can take good care of that. Right? But when they don't fully understand it and, and stand it, like we're kind of on the same playing field, it's like, no, I don't want you to have that. Sometimes that's how we are with God. Like if we could just see how much greater than us that he is, we would really understand how much we can trust him with those things that we put in his hand. And so it's important that we know that, that what God wants from us in surrender is he wants all of us, everything. Itemize it or put it in a hole. He's coming after all of it. And regardless of how, like the struggles we might have with it and, and the understanding of, of what it means to fully surrender and know that I'm giving all of it away, I, I don't get to choose when I get that back. I think that more than knowing just what, I think we need to know why does God want me to surrender my life to him? This is a really important one. I'm going to give you three things that I think you should write down that are super important as to why. So first off, why he wants me to surrender my life to him is because what he wants to give me is himself. What, what God wants to give me in return is not more of what I already have that I'm giving him. What, he doesn't want me coming to him for the things in his hands. What I get by coming to him and surrendering all that I have and all that I am is I get him. Like, think for a second. If I surrender everything, truly, all that I have and all that I am is yours, and I'm left with nothing. I am fully empty. Like, there's nothing I have in my control, nothing I have that, I, that is mine I surrender it all to you. It puts me in position where what God gives a chance, what God has a chance to do in my life is then fully give me himself. All the things that sometimes we hold on to, we cling to, it doesn't matter if it's a pow power, authority, a thing, a position, a title. If I'm holding so deeply onto those things, I have no room in my hands for what he's wanting to put in them. And what he wants to give me is himself, which is what's actually going to fulfill me. Like we hold on to the things that won't, in the end, actually give us any level of fulfillment. They're just a facade of it. And what he's saying is, listen, if you'll just empty your hands, like give, surrender yourself to me, what I'll give in return is me. That's what God wants to do in us and with us. If you guys remember, there was a... Um, our, our previous pastor, Pastor Mike Goolsbey, he, he told this um, story every once in a while. Uh, you might have heard it if you were here and you remember it all. He told this story um, about a young girl with plastic pearls. And I don't remember all the details of, in, in, of the story, but the, in this illustration, it was simply that there was a, a dad who loved his young girl and he gave her this set of plastic pearls and, and she like fell in love with him. 
She thought they were beautiful, and she loved, like, she wore them all the time. She wanted them, and her dad was like, man, if she loves plastic pearls, like, she would love some real pearls. And so he got her these real pearls, and then he went to her, and he said, hey, sweetheart, are those plastic pearls, like, would you give them to me? And she's like, no, these are mine. Like, I want these. These are beautiful. I love them. And he's, okay. And so the time goes on where he asks, and he asks, and and finally, she's like, you know what? You keep asking me all the time. Here, fine, take my plastic pearl. I don't know what you want with them. Why do you keep asking me for my plastic pearls? And he got a chance to then give her a set of real pearls. And he said, listen, when I saw how much you love them, I wanted to give you the real thing. And the thing is, is I think it was, it's just a, it's a, a silly story and illustration. It just goes back to pointing, like, what God wants to ultimately give us is himself. I belong to you and you belong to me. And that in that relationship, it's more than enough for all the other stuff. Another thing is this, is the reason why he wants me to surrender my life to him is because he wants me to live free. He wants me to live free. In Romans chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, it says this, it says, but thanks be to God that Though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. And that's a powerful one. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. What God wants for me is freedom. In my relationship with him, when I ask him to forgive me of my sins and I come into the family of God, he breaks the chains of sin in my life. What he offers me is not to no longer be chained to that sin, but to be chained to righteousness in him. That I'm no longer bound to those things. I'm now bound to all that is good. And there's freedom in that. I'm not... I'm not a slave to that sin anymore, but I am now a slave to righteousness. I am free. And he wants me to live and to walk in that freedom, fully experiencing himself, but also then walking in my daily life in the freedom that I belong now to him. I am free to obey because what the sins that once weighed me down, I have surrendered to him. And now I get to walk in the freedom. And then the third one, the other two are good. The first one's actually my favorite, but this one's a good one to remember. The, one of the reasons why, and this, this is not an exhaustive list, okay? We could search through scripture and find all kinds of reasons why God has invited us into surrendering our lives to him. But another one, a third one I have down, is because he wants us, he wants me to join him on his mission. He wants me to surrender my life to him because one of the things he wants for me is to join him on mission. He is inviting me into his story. Like your, your life, that small little snippet in history that exists, your story has an opportunity to belong to his story. When we surrender and give our lives to him, we belong to that. It, 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 and this kind of churchy word concept we talk, it, this is the meta narrative of scripture. That throughout the Bible, throughout the scriptures himself, there's this story threaded all the way through it. That God is on the move to rescue, restore, and redeem all of his creation. That is his story. Like from the, from the moment we see creation and then mankind falls into temptation and sin, God at that moment is on the move of restoration and redemption for mankind. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, we're going to see this in verse 20, but I want to set you up. We're going to read through starting at verse 15. I want you to see this here. It says, he, this is talking about Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, <clears throat> visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. 
and he is before all things. And in all, and in him, all things hold together. And he is the body, the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in everything that he might be preeminent. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Watch this, verse 20. And through him, that's Jesus, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the mission of God all throughout history. It is the big story, the big picture that sits over the top of every other story that exists. All over the world, throughout all politics, throughout all ethnicities, throughout all time, the story of God sits over the top of it. Where God is reconciling, restoring, and redeeming things back to himself. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 19, he invites us into this process. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The mission of God that overlaps and overlays all of history. After God has given us himself and allowed us to walk in freedom, he then invites us to surrender ourselves that we might join him on mission. To join in his story that sits over the top of everything. Like when we talk about the mission here at, at Destiny Church, the, the, the way that we have worded things here, that I'm called to know Jesus and show Jesus. This is about the mission of the church. I'm called to know Jesus and then show Jesus to the world. But this is bigger than destiny. Like my surrendered living is for the sake of God's mission to go after the one. Like, bigger than just the mission of Destiny Church. Like, we belong to the Big C Church. Like, the church as a whole is wrapped up in the mission of God to go after the lost, to go after the one, to set aside, to surrender ourselves to that mission. To surrender to God because he invites us on that mission. And sometimes we can so easily forget that one, this is one of the reasons why he invites us in. And sometimes when we find ourselves just foggy and fuzzy with why it is we're going about doing things, one of the things we should come back to is this, is that the reasons why he asked me to surrender is because he wants to give me himself, which is more than enough, to walk in freedom in everyday life and to join him on mission, to set aside everything, to set aside my own preferences, to set aside all these own things. Why? So that... I might join him in going after the one as he reconciles all things to himself. So if you forget the reasons why, return to the reasons why as you return to surrender. And lastly, as we kind of close this out here, the third thing I said that we were gonna go to is this, is how do I go about surrendering my life to God? How do I go about this? And... <clears throat> I'm gonna separate two groups of people, but the answer is still the same. For those of you who are in relationship with God, you're what the Bible calls born again. You have repented of your sins and been welcomed into the family of God. The way that we return to surrender is the same way we came to surrender in the first place. And it is an understanding it is a believing in our heart and a confessing with our mouths that we return to surrender. When we feel and understand in our own hearts that we have attempted to capture back something or some power, we simply come in prayer to God and say, God, I have attempted to, <laughs> me again, tried to get control of it again. I'm returning it to surrender to you. Listen, in the end, that's actually all just an illusion. You never really grabbed power of it. You just thought you did. But let's not go too far down that side. 
We get to, ter- when we, in our hearts and with our mouths, we confess. And listen, if you've never given your life to Jesus, for those of us who have, this is the way we started. It's, it's Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, when it, it talks about that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. If you don't know Jesus and, and you want to give your life to him, it, it starts right there. To understand that Jesus, God's son, Jesus, paid the price for our sins by dying on a cross for all mankind. You believe that in your heart and you confess it with your mouth before God that you can be saved. It's the initial place of surrender to him. And so regardless of where you find yourself, the heart and the mouth are directly tied up in how we go about surrendering to God. And we have to, as we go through this, always, always look to Jesus who is the ultimate example of surrendered living. That, that scripture we started off with, that scripture of, of Jesus in the garden getting ready to go and sacrifice his life for the sins of all mankind and then returning to a place of surrender to God, that's a culminating moment in his life. It's a singular moment that's built on many moments of surrender. And so here's the thing, Jesus lives a lifestyle of surrender to the heavenly father and he invites us into that with him. And and to give you just a thought that we could close with before we pray, I would give you this thought. The title of this series is called Surrendered Living, not Surrendered Moments. Surrendered moments would probably be a better reflection about the way that we typically live our lives though, wouldn't it? Like surrender isn't about choosing the moments that we want to surrender. It isn't about choosing the areas of life that we want to surrender. But life is a series of moments, isn't it? Is that not life? One moment that moves to the next. You define, it's hard to define what is living, what is life. Life is a succession of moments. And so surrendered living is about a lifestyle where the moments that we surrender to Jesus become closer and closer together. Where we, over time, get to move from surrendered moments to surrendered living. And so, again, There's no guilt or shame or condemnation in that. Jesus knows your story and he knows the process. God knows your heart. He knows all these things. And what he wants from us is to simply move closer and closer between those moments where we're just surrendering more and more to him. Because even when we say, I give it all to you, many times even what we understand of all is a little bit limited. And we return to a place of surrender. So as we pray, and if you would bow your heads and close your eyes, I want to pray for a couple of different groups of people as we respond here to the message. If you're here and you belong to Jesus, I know there's always an area of our life where we've attempted to regain control. God, I ask that as we sit here, myself included, that if there's a part of my life that I'm trying to pull back and trying to control and trying to take back from you, would you reveal that to me in my heart? Would you reveal it to us in our hearts that we might return to surrender that to you again? Or maybe there's a new part of us we just haven't even seen or thought of before. God, we make a choice now to give it to you. And God, I pray for anybody here in the room who has never given their lives to you. That just like we talked about just a moment ago in, in Romans chapter 10. God, I thank you that if anyone sits here now believing in their heart that your son Jesus paid for their sins by dying on a cross and rose again, that if they would say it with their mouths that you would save them where they sit. So God, I pray you'd give them courage and boldness that right where they sit to simply just ask you. 
God, help. Save me as I surrender myself to you. And that they would be able to walk in a new life of surrendered living. And all of us, all of us, God, remind us of the why. Remind us that when we surrender ourselves to you, what we get in turn is we get you, we get freedom, and we get invited into your mission and your story. Father God, we love you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, church, uh, if you need prayer for anything at all and you, you would like to talk to someone on the prayer team, you can always see one of them up front. Uh, to the right, or if you could grab one of the pastors if you'd like to, to, to pray with you or anything along those lines. Uh, if you're coming to Grow Fast Track next week, don't forget, like Pastor Jonathan said, it starts at 9 o'clock, and we can knock out all four of those um, if you're interested in that over in the conference room of the Destiny Kids Junior Building. Uh, other than that, you guys have a wonderful Sunday. You guys are dismissed.